on guys welcome back to the ruckus update so today we just got a box on my front porch i ordered some parts long story short i ordered the ncy cdi ordered the some sort of kevlar belt the daytona kevlar belt five and a half gram slider weights and a t-tac uh, tachometer so here's the box i already kind of opened it here's everything that's inside got the tack got the new kevlar belt a, the Ruck Shop sticker with a little fireball inside of it. The NCY CDI and Dr. Poli five and a half gram roller weights. So we're going to be installing all these today on the good old Ruck to see if we can't hit a new top speed record. So the, this is going to take the longest, which is the NCY CDI. The wiring just takes a little bit more or less. The panels take taking out the panels is going to take the longest amount of time. So I'll try to walk walk through on how that's going to be done um tachometer is going to be easy the belt's going to be easy and so are the pulleys so let's just dive right on into it know the seat had to come off first but I obviously figured it out the hard way as you just saw so there it is in all its glory it is dirty as can be though and it will definitely be cleaned before I'm done with all this so I'll be tapping into some of these wires up here getting my tack around the spark plug to get a rpm reading and like I said cleaning all this up and we'll see you once this is all done I'll probably end up mounting this right here like this and it'll stay just like that right there some sticky tape or some zip ties one or the other I ran the wire all the way down through here followed the wire path down through here underneath the tank all the way up and wrapped it around the spark plug so the tack is all good to go and next step is the CDI box here is the CDI box and here is the harness that it comes with and the connector that it comes with, I have a couple of extra of these, so that's gonna be good just in case you make a mistake. So let's get to plugging this good, uh, good little piece of wire into the machinery. And let's raise this rev limit and actually hit a new top speed. The black with the yellow that's tapered right on inside of there, as you can see, you're gonna cut that. Orange is gonna be going out. Yellow is gonna be going in. You're gonna take the NCY CDI box and you're going to be plugging the only six port that fits into it with the six port on the box. And then the blue with the yellow wire that's just chilling there, you're gonna take that and plug it into the blue one that comes with the harness. And I'll show you what to do with these last three over here in a sec. Which was right there, take that off. You're gonna see this red and green wire right there. It's kind of hard to see on the camera, but you're gonna take that, you're gonna cut that, and then you're gonna be splicing it in. That's gonna be your power. You're gonna be splicing it in with the red wire right here. So I'll show you what that looks like once it's done those two together they just gave you this little blue piece and it just splices the two wires together that little piece of metal will go through both of them makes contact with both of them this one will be left over for nothing so you're not really using that and that is basically the ncy saw so i'm going to tuck this and make this flush one more thing actually you need to put the ground back on so you need to ground this to the battery and then you're done start it up and you will no longer have access to your kill switch this will no longer be a function the only way you can start it, it will be from your key so that that's that in there everything's done everything's tucked away the ground is um, connected let's see how it works if it works hey we got life right away perfect it means the install work let's see if the tack's working does it give me a good reading sweet let's mount this thing up and uh, get the belt on next and then throw the roll weights in and take it for a test drive Next, you're gonna take out this cover by removing all these bolts right here. You can see all of them, and you're also gonna remove this kickstart, obviously. So we'll get into the cover, take it all apart, and then I'll show you what you guys wanna install, which will be these sliders and this Kevlar Daytona belt. All right, after the cover comes off, I already loosened this. You're gonna need some sort of spanner tool to hold this together. 
You're gonna take this off, you're gonna take the washer off, and you're gonna take this lock piece off. There we go, put that down. I'm gonna slide this piece off. It's still kinda hot because I took it for a test drive, but. So a thing to notice on these things, I don't even know if you can see it. Let me take this thing out. Wow, that thing's kind of got a score on it, actually. That's not good at all. So when you look at these, oh, that's fucking hot. You're losing like two to three mile an hour when you're not actually getting this, this top surface plate up here. So I don't know what I'm gonna do in terms of this. Ow, oh, that's really hot, so I'm gonna put that down. So as you can see the groove where it's not being used, so the belt slides up, slides up, slides up, and it is not hitting up here, which is not a good sign. So what I'm gonna do is probably have to, I don't feel like machining it, so I'm probably just gonna get a new Polini clutch and put that in. I'm gonna see if the factory one doesn't have as much of a groove as this one, so I'm gonna go check that out real quick. Weights, or not roller weights, slider weights. And the way you're gonna orient, and orient these inside of the variator is this sharp edge and then the rounded, or the flat part is going to be facing outwards. So you're gonna set it in just like that. All of them are gonna be facing outwards. A lot of people get this mixed up and wonder what's going on with why they're not having any power or anything. And they're like, I put new pulleys in or I put new slider weights in and nothing's working for me. This would probably be one of the biggest root causes of your problems. So sliders are supposed to be able to allow you to expand this plate farther, which would allow the opening between those two clutches to space itself farther apart. Roller weights don't have as much of a height when it comes to these sliders. Like as you can see, the height on one of these sliders compared to a roller weight, like here's the middle of the there's the middle, look how much taller you're getting. So that percentage of whatever this is right here that you're lacking, the touch on top of that, and you're, you have that much more play up and down. So that's probably a 20% gain with range of pushing this clutch plate out. So a pretty significant difference when it comes to sliders and rollers. And the efficiency range and the low end power band is a lot better. So I guess I will prove this theory out and see if it actually is true. All right, all the new sliders are now in. The new Daytona belt is on. It's pretty simple. All I had to do is remove this screw, torque it down to 30 foot-pounds. This will get torqued down to 27 foot-pounds once I get it on. Just gonna get this belt over top of here. It's a brand new belt. It's gonna be kind of hard to stretch at first, but then we're gonna put this back on. Same way it all came off. Okay, I'm gonna put this back on, this back on, and then the nut. Boom, just like that, and we're gonna torque it back down. And I'm not gonna put the cover on yet because I wanna kinda go test it and tune it and see if the belt's gonna stretch like it's supposed to and see how it feels, so. Stay tuned, and once the cover's back on, we'll let you know what a speed update. Actually, the next video is going to be the speed update, not this one. We're going to wait, because I want to break this belt in correctly. It needs like 25 to 30 miles. So if you guys like these how-tos, even though it wasn't really a how-to, it's more or less just a ruckus update on how I'm doing with my project, subscribe, like, comment. Let me know if you have a ruckus or you have any questions. The install went fairly smoothly. It took me everything about an hour, and I was just messing around and bullsh bullshitting. So yeah, anyways, have a good day, guys. Peace. Till